ओम नम शिवाय शिव जी सदा सहाय ओम नम शिवाय गुरु जी सदा सहाय ऑल माई टी फादर ही कीप्स गिविंग सत्संग ऑफ नीरू भारद्वाज गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देवो महेश्वरा गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्मा तस्मय श्री गुरुवे नम we believe in the existence of an unseen and unknown supreme power which reinforces its presence through our faiths and beliefs that supreme power has many times manifested itself in the form of various avatars in different yugas or ages and that very supreme form has in this yug taken a human guise in the form of our respected guruji Every human being in any part of the world is the recipient of a sublime benediction irrespective of whether the person knows it or not there are myriad instances which speak volumes about us being blessed every passing second but it is impossible to narrate each and every blessing in this constrained format but there are a few that i would like to share with his blessings At first we were skeptical about visiting his mandir as we were non believers in saints and yogis but it is very true that one can soak in his divine presence only if and when he wishes it our call from guruji thus came in november 1995 in jalandhar my husband had been suffering from a severe skin ailment psoriasis it had been over 8 years and we had tried all possible treatments He was covered from head to toe with big red red patches and crusted with a thick white itchy crust. His scalp used to feel hard like rock. Even his genitals were covered with patches. Apart from this, he had to face the mental trauma of dealing with people who would shrink from even standing near him. With no other alternative but with some reluctance we went to Guruji. In retrospection I realize how lucky we were. Guruji produced divine prasad producing fragrant sweets from nowhere in front of my eyes not once or twice but 6 to 7 times during our initial days but the telling blow to these uncertainties fell when guruji blessed my husband on 1st january 1996 he told us to bring a copper tumbler which he blessed my husband had to drink water from it first thing in the morning and bathe with the rest miraculously he was cured within a few days riding me of a hormonal problem at the same time i was undergoing treatment for hypothyroidism i was on two pills of altroxin a massive dose one day i was sitting at guruji's feet when he suddenly said neeru aunty tera hormonal problem theek kar diya i have treated your hormonal problem i was taken aback because i had never said anything about my problem to him I experienced firsthand that you don't have to say anything to him he knows everything sure enough i stopped taking medicines after tests were negative moreover when i was in panchkula i developed a severe gynecological problem and began taking medicines but in vain i had to go to the toilet at least 10 to 12 times during the night and had several other complications too i couldn't sleep at all and was so cranky the whole day Guruji was in Delhi at that time. Fortunately, my husband had a meeting in Delhi. I decided to accompany him so that we could have Guruji's darshan in the evening. We left our little daughter at home thinking that we would be back home early the next morning. But on the contrary, in the evening after having Guruji's darshan, when we went to take leave, he told us to stay back for 4 days. We were thrilled and said an instant yes. We stayed there for four days, soaking in his divine presence and lapping up all that chai prasad and langar. On the fourth day, he gave us permission to leave. At home, I slept calmly, realizing that he had cured me of whatever I was suffering from. After a week, we could visit him again. The first thing he said was, "Niru aunty, susu thik ho gaya? Has your urine problem been cured?" Everybody laughed. When I touched his feet he told me he had cured me of a uterine tumor again he had healed me without being told anything my daughter surises one day in june singa uncle came to tell me call on me on guruji's command i got up thinking that he might have wanted me to do satsang 
But instead, Guruji told me to get some Ayurvedic medicine for him from a specific pharmacy which only exports the stuff. With Guruji's blessings, we got the medicine that pharmacists normally don't give without a prescription. Guruji took the medicine one pill will with milk in the evening. After 15-20 days, he told us to return the same, saying it was too strong for him. We tried our best but couldn't return it because of the export problem. It was expensive and Guruji had asked for a substantial amount of the medicine. Towards the end of August, Tanya, my younger daughter, then in class 8, developed patches on her face. The doctor diagnosed psoriasis. We were stunned. For one month, we faced the dilemma of whether to tell Guruji about it or not. We told him in October and he again told us to bring a copper tumbler which he blessed. But contrary to expectations and her father's recovery, psoriasis started spreading all over Tanya's body. In just one month, she was covered from head to toe. Although badly affected physically, mentally she was a pillar of strength herself. Such is his grace that she remained positive and upbeat about it throughout. In the meanwhile, Guruji had gone somewhere and could not be contacted. Everybody from neighbors to Tanya's principal, out of concern for her, started calling up to do something for her. But before we could say anything, she positively would say, only my Guruji is going to cure me when the time is right. In the meanwhile, she endured so much that her hearts would go out for her. She couldn't even comb her hair due to the <clears throat> rock-like patches that had covered her whole body. It is in such times that his grace is felt all the more. Here, even a small child had been granted such a positive attitude. Guruji came back in January and the first thing he told us was to give the Ayurvedic medicine that could not be returned to Tanya. We realized that the medicine was meant for her in the first place. The medicine's full course is for 40 days. Tanya completed her 40th day on Shivratri and Guruji himself told us to stop the medication the next day. Divine calculation. Positive results started showing from the next day and by the time she went to her maternal grandmother's place during her vacations, Tanya was cured. She sometimes developed small patches around her face. I believe Guruji's finishing karma left over from her previous birth. He had told me that my girl would have remained affected throughout her life, saving 90 lives to save one. In 2002, my husband then posted at Belgaon, rang me up one Saturday in August to say he was coming home. He boarded the Goa Express on Saturday and was to arrive on Monday morning. The same Saturday, my daughter and I went to Guruji. That day, everything was all the more pleasurable because Guruji made me sit near him for a long time and made me do a lot of satsang. During langar, I also ate double or triple the amount of langar because of the red chili chutney, which was accidentally, that is what you think, otherwise nothing is accidental or incidental, served to me in quantities best reserved for dals or vegetables. To finish the chutney, I had to eat a lot of chapatis and dal. While giving me permission to leave, Guruji said, Auntie, aaj tera kalyan kar diya. I have blessed you today. I was elated. In the morning, I was woken by a call from my husband. He abruptly said, everything is fine, don't worry. He then told me that his train had derailed and put the phone down. I connected the previous evening's happenings and the blessings that averted the mishap and was overwhelmed. I put on the TV and saw the breaking news, Goa Express, seven bogies derailed, no casualties. I immediately went to the Bari Mandir as I was feeling restless. Singla uncle's daughter, Aarti, was the first one to meet me. Obvious of my state of mind, she teased me about the amount of chutney I had to eat the previous night. I told her of the derailment and she was shocked. She called her mother and they both hugged me. Tears were rolling down our cheeks. We spent the day doing satsang with others. In the evening, when I went to Guruji, he asked me if I had come to tell him about the derailment. I could just nod. He told me that he had saved 90 other people to save a single devotee. The fact was corroborated, not that it needs to be, by Mrs. Sabarwal, 
who was with Guruji on Saturday. At 1.30 a.m., Guruji was sitting silently, she said, when out of the blue he said he had saved 90 people. It was at 1.30 a.m. that the train had derailed. Sitting in Delhi, Guruji had saved so many near Pune. Who could have done this but God himself? The power of prayer. With Guruji, no words are required. Silent prayers said from the heart reach him. One morning, I was reading the Shiv Puran when I came upon lines that said that God does not hold or touch you physically, but if he does, generations of your kul are blessed. I thought of how Guruji gave blessings from a distance. In the evening, when we reached Guruji's place, Guruji was in his room and calling us. We sat on the carpet and Guruji started talking to us. Suddenly, he held forth his arm and told me to press his shoulders. Then he purposefully held my hand and twined his fingers in mine and repeated in chaste Hindi the lines I had read. Another time we had to go to Haridwar from Ambala. A super fast train that takes two to three hours used to leave Ambala at 10.30 a.m. It was already 10.35 a.m. when we reached the station. My husband was keen on traveling by bus. I objected, telling him the UP roads were bad and that it would take five to six hours. We asked a passing porter about the train and he said that it was never late, but by chance it was running 10 minutes late that day. He added that the signal was down and was about to leave. Absent-mindedly, I prayed to Guruji that we catch the train. My husband agreed to give it a try and told me to run ahead and cross the bridge. He planned to buy platform tickets as there was a big queue on the ticket counter. So I ran and on getting down the stairs, I reached the place where the engine was. To my dismay, it started moving. Like a fool, I started waving at the engine driver to stop, as you would in case of a bus. And can you believe it? The train stopped for us for a good seven to eight minutes till my husband came and we boarded it. Free pizzas at home. On 14th August 2005, leaflets announcing an Independence Day scheme, one pizza free on purchase of one were being distributed by Domino's. My younger daughter was excited about it, but I put it damper on her, saying we had already exceeded the month's expenses, so no pizzas. Mockingly, she said, Guruji, this is not fair. You know I love pizzas. In the evening, we had friends from Guruji's Sangat come over for dinner. I prepared the dinner in advance. When they came in the evening, they said the children wanted to have pizzas, so they had ordered two large ones. They were not aware of the scheme. So when the delivery came, two free pizzas were missing. The delivery person gave two pizzas and went back to get the other two. Meanwhile, when we opened the box, one pizza was non-vegetarian, whereas the order had been for vegetarian pizzas. We rang up the pizza company. They apologized and offered to rectify the error. By this time, the other two pizzas had also arrived and the error, error had been repeated. At this point of time, our friend lost his school and called up the manager. He came to a place along with the colleagues and was profuse in his apologies. He offered to return the money, but since our friends had already paid, the free pizza order was extended at our discretion. That is, we could have four extra large pizzas whenever we wanted. Since we couldn't finish the four pizzas for dinner, we had them for breakfast too. We had a great time gorging on free pizzas for the next few months. My husband gets a corporate job. My husband has been a marketing person in the pharmaceutical industry. He has always had a field job with no office and no fixed timings. Three years ago, when he was posted in Karnataka, we missed him badly. Once I was at the Bade Mandir, sitting in the hall, eyes closed. I was thinking that it would have been nice if my husband had a routine office job where I could pack his lunch. 
Suddenly, a lady from the Sangat came to me and said, Your wish is granted. Surprised, I opened my eyes and found her equally surprised. Within a couple of months, my husband had to resign. And later, thanks to Guruji, he got a corporate job that was no field work when he is that has no field work when he is in town. It's a nine to five job and I have to pack his lunch, which I sometimes resent. He even travels in comfort and luxury. On the other hand, I use sandals. In fact, on 14th April after Baisakhi, when we reached Guruji, the sole of my sandal came apart. I couldn't do anything. I let it be, thinking that I would pick them up and walk barefoot while going back. When I came out, I couldn't find the torn sandals. As I looked for them, I found a pair resembling mine, but they were fine. I picked them up and checked the tag, and sure enough, they were mine. But to our utter surprise, they were as good as new. Daughter gains admission in law school. Although my elder daughter, Megha, had taken up the non-medical stream in class 12, Guruji casually mentioned the art stream for her future. Somehow through a satsang, he also gave us a clue about her taking up law as a subject. She filled the form duly and when she went for her entrance exam, she was astonished to find that other students had taken up special coaching classes and were armed with law books. She took Guruji's name and sat for the exam. Out of the thousands who had appeared, only 900 qualified for the next level, which comprised a group discussion and interview. Finally, only 250 had to be selected in the university. Due to Guruji's grace, she was. In the evening, when we told him about the admission, he was very happy and said, this is just the beginning. Just wait and watch. And sure enough, she's doing very well with his countless blessings. One could go on and on extolling Guruji's virtues and blessings, but still be clueless about who he actually is. As he is in a human form, we tend to take him up as somebody with supernatural powers like many others on this earth. But he is just not like anybody else. He is as unique as Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is Guruji and Guruji is Shivji. He is the ultimate. But that doesn't mean that all is hunky-dory here. He takes you through the roller coaster ride of life with its share of ups and downs, according to one's karma. He shows you like he did to me the futility of all relationships, however close. And when you think that there is nobody for you in this world, he shows you his presence in a very subtle way. And thereafter, even if he doesn't speak to you, yet he makes his presence felt with an all-pervading fragrance. Although it is very difficult, yet according to me, the easiest way out of this illusionary world is to surrender to him. Entertain no ifs and no buts, just follow his lead. Life becomes so simple and beautiful. One has to just accept life as it comes with positivity and faith, which is his true blessing to us all. Last but not the least, he sees, he listens, he acts without even our knowledge, for he is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. My daughter Meghna, Megha writes thus for him. Thank you. Guruji, why do we fall and then rise again? Why do we laugh in that unbearable pain? Why is it that we smile in that incessant rain? The reason is the priceless blessings that we have gained. The reason is the love of our Guruji which our life sustains. You are the ultimate strength of our lives. You are the supreme force in that human guise. You are the final answer to every doubt. You are eternal happiness like the benevolent rain-giving cloud. We love you, respect you. We bow and we pray that you take us in your heart and forever there 
वी स्टे अनंतम शुक्राना गुरु साहिब